Right standing that God requires must be born out of a righteousness that is not contaminated with the filth of this world. The fall of man, which was occasioned by the temptation of Eve, led to the mutilation of mankind. When God created Adam and Eve, they were in a state that God desired that they should be in. They were in his image after his likeness. And all they did was good. They were created according to the blueprint that God had for man. A creation that will take after the image of God and will live in his likeness. But in Genesis chapter 3, the tempter visited the garden. And man who was supposed to till, to cultivate, and also to protect, to keep the garden, on that day decided to relax himself. You see, God created man as a borderline creature. Man has capacity to operate in the various realms of existence that are in reality. In other words, he can operate in the three realms. He can operate in heaven, the heaven of God. He can operate in the atmospheric heaven where you have the transcendental planes where you have principalities powers wicked spirits operating in heavenly places which is before the heaven you know paul spoke about three heavens he says i was caught up where in the third heaven so the first heaven is this atmospheric atmosphere over us the clouds that we see the air beyond that there is an heaven which consists of 13 transcendental planes that's why some people look at the sun look at the moon and pray and get results they are actually communicating with wicked spirits in the heavenly places but beyond that point there is also the heaven of god and man has capacity as a borderline creature to interact with this realm, with the physical realm. He has legality here. He has capacity also to interact with the heaven of God and also with the atmospheric heaven. So God gave man the ability to do that so that he will be able to stop whatever is coming from the kingdom of darkness you know satan was cast down from heaven the heaven of god and when he was cast down he had no place so he dwelt in wherever he found he dwelt in the heavenlies he is also dwelling beneath the earth in hell so God gave Adam the capacity to protect the earth. When he says keep the garden, it, says, it means guide it. So Adam had spiritual ability to see clearly into the realm of the spirit like he could see into the realm of the physical. So if he saw a fallen angel coming in, he had ability and legality to drive it out. But in Genesis chapter 3, the serpent visited. And Adam relaxed himself. Perhaps he just felt, well, they can't do anything. Let me observe what would happen. And the serpent, who was harassed by the tempter, that Satan, struck a conversation with Eve. 
And that conversation was directed at the soul of Eve, not his a spirit. The soul. You see, your soul comprises of your volition, mind, and emotion. That is your will, intellect, and feelings. That is the seat of your personality. So, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, emotions like anger, joy, peace, love are all encapsulated in your soul. So Satan said to, him, to her, as God said that you shall not eat of any of the fruit of the trees of the garden. And he said, no, God didn't say that. God said that we may freely eat of the fruits of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is in the midst of the garden, we must not what? Eat. In fact, I'm sure Adam had an instruction that don't even touch it. So he said we must not even touch it. For the day we touch it, we will surely die. And Satan said, no, no, no. It's not so. It's not correct. Uh, you see, he attacked the reputation of God. And said, God is hiding something from you. God knows. He doesn't want you to know. That the day you eat of the fruit of this tree, you will become like God, knowing good and evil. In other words, you will become independent of God. You will know what is good, you will know what is evil, you'll be able to do whatever you will. And when that temptation came, Satan directed it at the soul to attract three things the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life so when she saw that the fruit was pleasant to decide was that the lust of the eyes for good things beautiful things oh we want beautiful things We were traveling in from Delta State some time ago and we were believing God to get cars and we were driving in a CROV when an islander passed. And I asked the person driving, I said, what vehicle is that? He says, an islander. I said, wow, that's good. That's the one I want. And God made a way because we actually wanted to buy a car. A friend of mine can say, why don't you buy an SUV? I said, I don't have the money. He said, I would, I would give you some amount of money. I'll support you. And long story cut short, the SUV was bought. He bought it through a friend and imported it. Now after a few weeks, of driving that vehicle i remember when we we're driving it you know from lagos to benin i felt like my god this is wonderful this is what wonderful now what i was driving before then was uh, an audi so now in an suv elevated you know with good air conditioning it looks so wonderful and i said my god thank you thank you but you know some months later i saw other models i saw that beautiful cars and i remember telling god one day when i saw the 2012 model i said god this one is this one is good can you give this to me also he said no it's not yet time that was some years ago it does not matter what you have now the eyes will never be satisfied with sin so when he saw that it was beautiful the fruit was beautiful and then the lust of the flesh it was good for food now she has several kinds of fruits in the garden 
is the one that the Lord said don't eat of that became good for food for nourishment and then one desired to make one wise oh, I'll become wiser the pride of life she took of it and what and ate and she gave to her husband with her who also look and say well the woman has eaten because he was not beguiled remember when god showed up in the garden and adam where are you he said i, I heard the sound of thy foot on the garden and i was afraid because i was naked so i hid myself and god said who told you you were naked that vocabulary is strange i never communicated with you using that word have you partaken of the fruit i commanded you not to eat what did he say he said the woman gave to me and i what i ate he didn't say i was deceived it was he that said the serpent beguiled me deceived me and i what and i ate and god began to judge but you see what happened by that temptation that was incited by the serpent led to the mutilation of mankind the nature the spirit nature lifestyle of mankind became damaged as a result of it let me give you an analogy let's imagine that you bought um, iphone 12 and one day you were browsing on net a virus invaded your phone and you were trying to arrest that virus using the antivirus you couldn't and in the bid of doing that you got so displeased that you threw it and it fell the screen got broken and also the functionality of the phone was affected because of the virus inside so that phone became mutilated the screen is destroyed the operating system is malfunctioning and there are some dents on the body of the phone do you understand that that was exactly what happened to man man operating system became corrupted his soul just took over the leadership of man man is a spirit is a combination of spirit soul and body you can't be a man without having a soul do you understand that you can't be a man without a soul the spirit of man came from god but when that spirit came to the body of man as they match together you remember god created man in himself he formed man also from the dust and the moment the spirit came into the casing the body something else was created and that is the soul of man so man became a living soul now the spirit is the master when in this original creator state the spirit is the master the soul is the steward and the body is the slave of man so the spirit makes the decision gives instruction through the soul to the body and the body hearts it out now that was how man was in his original created state his spirit was alive could relate with God and the realm of the spirit and whatever it receives as directive from God will communicate to the soul which was the seat of his personality and the soul would instruct the body 
to carry out whatever the spirit wills do you know that when you touch a hot pot for instance the reason why you take your hands off that hot pot is because the moment you touch that pot the censoring neurons you know pick the signal the heat of the pot and transmit it to your brain which is also your mind your brain and your mind at the same thing the psychological name of your brain is your mind and the physiological name of your mind is your brain so when you receive that input the brain will process it and would give instruction now all of that takes place from the soul if they open up the brain they will just only see the physiological parts that's the physical parts they can't see the thoughts those thoughts are part of the soul so once the brain gives instruction that the hand should go off that pot it will quickly withdraw if it doesn't that finger can be burning on that pot and you may not even know it's burning and that's what happens when people go through stroke and parts of their brain stop functioning it would impede their functionality sometimes it could even affect the ability to move their hands maybe one side hand and feet so when this mutilation occurred man became badly damaged man became rebellious and annihilated from the life of god and that fall began to degrade into evil wickedness and so many other abominable things you remember by the time cain came cain was the first man to kill he killed abel and then the bible says that cain departed from the presence of the lord after god judged him you remember that he departed from the presence of the lord and went to the east and established a civilization under the government of satan now wickedness began to abound upon the face of the earth i'm telling you the reason why god needed to initiate a new creation a new creation something happened to the first creation that made it a whole creation that god had to decide to recreate man by the time you get to the book of genesis chapter 6 from verse 5 to 7 by this time murder wickedness sexual perversion and all manner of evil was on the increase upon the earth the sons of god forsake their estate and they began to intermarry with the sons the daughters of men so there was pollution there was defilement and then by genesis chapter 6 verse 5 the bible says then the lord god saw that the wickedness verse 5 it says then the lord god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only what evil continually that virus that came into the phone that adam took in when he partook of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil began to operate from one generation to another do you understand it's like that let's let's assume that your phone was connected to other systems and so the virus just perpetually began to invade one system after and another and after it has infected this system and corrupted it the damage that will be done to the next one will be greater than what it did to the iphone Adam had not given birth to any child before the fall. 
So everyone that was born, every descendant of Adam, took this fallen nature that is called the flesh, which is the nature of carnality, which is the ability to do evil, is the knowledge and ability to do evil. And it just went from one man to another. You don't need to teach a child to tell a lie. Do you need to do that? You don't. It's inherent. We are born with such ability. We are conceived with such knowledge to do evil. So, man began to degenerate in wickedness. So, by Genesis 6 verse 5, it says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Everywhere God looked, there was what? Wickedness. He says, and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. In other words, there were no good thoughts again. All that was going through the soul of man was to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The nature of the flesh is actually the rebellious nature of Satan. That rebellion that Satan began in heaven, he decided to continue through man on the earth. And the result of that is in verse 6 and 7. It says, and the Lord was sorry. The Lord was what? Sorry that he had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. You see, God also has a soul. Angels are just spirit beings. The Father has a soul. The Son has a soul. The Holy Spirit has a soul. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. The Bible says do not grieve the Spirit of God. You can't be grieved if you don't have a soul. You must have emotions to be grieved. That's why the Father can love. For God so loved the world. Angels don't know what it means to love. So Satan being a fallen angel doesn't have emotion. He doesn't know what it means to lose a loved one. He doesn't know what it means to be hurt. To go through pain. That's why Satan must never have dominion over your life. Demons don't have emotion. They don't have emotion. They don't know what it means to be in pain, to be hurt, to be heartbroken. They don't understand that. His angels are amazed at the love of the Father for mankind. He said, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. Why is your mind, why do you think about man? Why do you love man so much? God loves you so much that he thinks about you. He says, I know the thought that I think towards you. Praise God. See, I'm in his mind. He loves me so much. He thinks about me. He cares about me. Praise God. Amen. What a wonderful thing. So behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. That we should be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's so wonderful to have a father that thinks about you. That cares about you. When you go through pains, he feels it. He knows what you are going through. He knows when it's challenging. When you weep, he catches your tears in a bottle. When a strand of your hair falls down, he numbers it. God loves you so, so dearly. He said, for God so loved, so loved, not God loved. He so, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Praise God. So God became grieved in his heart. He was heartbroken. God suffered heartbreak. The 
Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his he pained him you know he couldn't allow the wickedness to continue it's a just God and being just implies that sin must be punished and the wages of sin is death and the Bible says all have sinned and come short or falling short of the glory of the Lord so since the wages of sin is death and all have sinned God needed to extend a gift the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life praise God he says so the Lord said verse 7 I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast creeping thing and birds of the air for I am sorry that I have made them did you notice that that mutilation that affected man also affected other creature in the earth do you understand that God never created the mosquito to suck blood God never created the lion to eat flesh those were the results of the fall so the things that happen to the communication system this operating system and the screen and the casing as a result of the virus and the fall started distorting other hardwares and softwares it's like a, a, a vehicle that was traveling with humans chickens and dogs and all of a sudden there was an accident and some of the chickens died some of the dogs died some of the humans died and then so for some of them their body parts were damaged so maybe one of the chickens neck twisted so when you bring out that chicken it will be doing like this <laughs> have you seen <laughs> have you seen chickens doing like this before <laughs> i've seen so when you bring out some of the men that used to walk straight will not be limping like this is a result of the accident so when god saw the way creation had been badly damaged he had no option but to destroy to judge the wickedness of man and it was on this note that the lifespan of man was reduced to 120. And then God began a new generation through Adam. That's why 8 means new beginning. It's the number of new beginning. Before long, Adam had planted a vineyard. God drunk. His son uncovered him. And Adam pronounced a curse do you understand that and those condemnation wickedness were perpetuated from generation to generation until God found Abraham and God began to make attempt to redeem mankind and what God had in mind was to begin a new race a new creation and this will take us to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. And that implies that on earth right now, there are two rays. There are two creation. Do you understand that? There are two tribes. So 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any one is in Christ he is what a new creation my focus now is on that phrase a new creation I've dealt with in Christ so you can get the tape and listen to that 
I can go back to what we focused on. A new creation. What is a new creation? And how do you become a new creation? It is when you understand the meaning of that word, a new creation, that you will know what the Bible implies by all things are passed away. And behold, all things, hallelujah, have become new. Praise God. Since the mutilation of the first mankind as Adam and Eve led to the destruction of the operating system of man, the, man, the soul of man, his spirit was contaminated. You know, a lot of things happened as a result of that fall. First of all, the nature of the flesh invaded man's space, came into his soul. So the soul took over the government of man. Remember I told you the spirit was in charge before. So the soul took over the government of man and subdued his spirit. And so Satan took occasion of that and killed the spirit of man. Not that man's spirit ceased to exist. It came into a state of abination. It was in a state of coma. So man's soul began to dominate man. That's why the Bible says the thought of his heart was continually what? Evil. Do you understand that? So everything that was the intent of the thoughts of his heart, where do you think? In your mind, it was continually evil. Now, not only was that nature of the flesh which is corruptive in nature interjected into man the knowledge for evil the ability to do evil began to find expression through man so man lost control of himself became a slave to satan lost dominion over the earth and was no longer in charge so satan began to afflict man you remember the book of hebrews chapter 2 from verse 14 it says 13 and 14 it says that in as much as the children are partaking of flesh and blood jesus himself partook of the same that through death he might deliver those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to satan in bondage so man was dominated was killed was oppressed and god didn't want that to continue so he wanted a new creature that will be restored after the image and likeness of god he wanted a new creature that will exercise the original mandate the dominion mandate over the earth he wanted a new creature that is created in righteousness and holiness so that they can live the life that god wants them to live and the prototype of that new creature was instituted in christ jesus so jesus became the template of the new creation and it was through him everyone who became and will become a new creation would come into existence in this new race do you understand that it's like if you remember the accident that happened hmm? now let's assume that the factory decided to recall the, the vehicle assembly factory decided to recall that vehicle 
because the vehicle also was damaged and then rehabilitate the vehicle so as a result of that certain parts of the vehicle that were damaged will be changed do you understand that that's why when you are born again you still have your body you still have your soul but your spirit has been changed so what happened to that iphone is for the iphone company to recall the iphone and then change the software change the screen change the part of the casing that are broken and so that phone will become a new product do you get it now so if any man is in christ he will become what a new creation what does it mean to become a new creation to become a new creation means to become a new species of being a new race a new tribe a new creature that never existed before that's what it means and let's see it in scripture now i'll just show you briefly in ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 then i'll go back to show you what would make you a new creation ephesians 4 verse 24 it says or let me read from verse 22 it says that you put off concerning your former conduct the whole man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust so there's a whole man that man that was given to wickedness whose intent and thought was continually evil now it says you put off the conduct of that man and be renewed in the spirit of your mind it says that you may put on the new man so there's a new man now there's a new creation it says which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness can you see that and you put on the new man which was created so this new man now is created he's talking about your spirit is created according to god so this new man is created according to the image and likeness of god in true righteousness and holiness not in evil so this new man does not have the knowledge and capacity to do evil is it clear to you i'll come back to it but let me quickly show you what it means to become a new creature how do you become a new creature in the book of john chapter 3 a ruler of the pharisees a man who was also a teacher of the pharisees by the name nicodemus visited jesus by night and when he visited jesus by night he asked a question he said i know that you are a teacher come from god and that no man can do the works that you do except god is with him in other words god is with you and god is attesting to that fact by walking signs and wonders in your life and ministry we are also teaching but the things you teach they are unique they are unusual so what is the secret of these workings of miracles how come you are able to do supernatural things in the natural way because jesus did the supernatural naturally it wasn't difficult Do you, uh, every time he opened the blind eyes caused the lame to walk made the wither hand whole he didn't need to struggle do you realize that he got to the synagogue saw the 
man whose hand was withered and all that he said was stretch forth your hand and the man stretched forth his hand and a withered hand became whole like the other hand a man was born blind from birth he was blind he had never seen and then Jesus gave him sight he showed us how creation took place just what he did before he did again he just spat on clay on sand made clay and applied to go and wash your eyes the man came back not only with eyes but with sight sight was restored back he didn't struggle praise God now when you become a new creation those are realities that you should become your daily experience praise God he said these signs will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons they'll speak with new tongues they'll take up serpent and if they drink anything deadly shall by no means all them they will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover now that means that if you are sick in your body and you lay hands on your body you'll be healed praise God and if somebody is sick around you and you lay hands on the person and pray you don't have to be a pastor or an apostle if you are a believer a new creation such mighty supernatural works should be wrought by you naturally should find expression in your life praise God so the man said what is the secret of these supernatural workings and Jesus in that chapter 3 of the book of John began to explain what it means to be a new creation and how you become a new creation it says except a man be born again he cannot what see the kingdom of God he cannot participate in the kingdom of God he cannot experience the dimension where he becomes a new creation the man looked at him and said what are you saying will I need to go back into my mother's womb a second time a grown man like me I will now be born a second time <laughs> in verse 6 Jesus began to clarify what he was saying although if you read from verse 5 verse 5 he says except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god now verse 6 he says very clearly that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit the implication of this statement is that there are two types of birth there is the physical birth that physical birth is occasioned by physical union between a male and a female and when that takes place when the physical union takes place there will be conception when there is a conception the breath of life will be imparted into that fetus so that fetus will become a natural being a human being having the breath of life having a human life but you see the end product of that bed is that you will end up becoming a flesh because it's a product of flesh and when the bible uses the word flesh it doesn't just mean to have skin and blood covering bones do you understand that 
it also implies the nature of the fallen man do you understand that you remember what the bible says it says the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is what it is flesh it cannot please god in galatians he said the flesh lost against the spirit and the spirit lost against the flesh so he's talking about the carnal nature the nature that longs to do evil so that's what the first birth we produce that which is born of the flesh is what is flesh it will produce flesh you will have the life that is called mortal life you will have the breath of life and you will be limited and remember that this being that is born of the flesh has already been condemned God clearly told Adam he said in the day you eat of the fruit of this tree you shall surely die in other words a process of death will begin that's why the other tree is called the tree of life so which means that the end product of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is what is death but the end product of the other tree is eternal life so if Adam had eaten of that tree we will not be in the mess we are in today and you know the moment God said you can freely eat of every fruit of the trees in the garden the Bible says and God mentioned he says the tree of life was also where in the center of the garden in other words this tree if you eat of it it will give you life and then God said bet of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for the day you eat of it you shall surely die so if you don't become a new creature you will surely die that which is born of the flesh is doomed already for destruction Do you understand that? He's already condemned. The wages of sin is death. This fleshy nature knows only to sin. And so it will surely die. But that which is born of the spirit. Praise God. Is the result of the impartation of the life of the spirit of god into a human being and that spiritual bed which makes you heavenly which makes you a new creature begins from the point of receiving jesus as lord and savior and is consummated by regeneration praise God so listen when you make Jesus your Lord and Savior the Holy Spirit will come into you is that clear and regenerate your spirit what it does is to take that old man out and recreate in you a new spirit that is after the image and likeness of God so that you can become a new creation And not only that, the Spirit of God would impact to you eternal life. It will remain with you and give you the life of God. That life in the tree of life that Adam refused to receive, it will deliver to you. Praise God. Do you understand what it means now to be a new creation? It means to be recreated but the spirit of god coming into your spirit to regenerate your spirit from the time you gave your life to christ that process will begin so becoming a new creation is instant progressive and ultimate 
The moment you give your life to Christ, your spirit man becomes a new creation. But your soul is still the same. So progressively, your soul will become a new creation. And ultimately, your body will become what? A new creation. Remember Ephesians we read from just now. Now it was written to believers. And if you read Ephesians 4 from verse 22. It says that you put off concerning your former conduct. So there were conducts we had when we were born of the flesh. It says put them what? Off. Concerning your former conduct. The whole man. That man that has been taken out. That man that grows corrupt. He says, stop the former conduct. Which grows corrupt according to deceitful laws. He says, and be what? Renewed in your mind. That means in your soul, a process that is called renewing has to begin where? In your mind. And then something else needs to happen. He says, and put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness. Now how are you going to put on the new man? That's to tell you that becoming a new man is progressive. It's not instantaneous. And it's also what? Ultimate. It's instant is progressive and is also what ultimate now let's read together the book of ephesians chapter 4 from verse 25 to 32 now what the great apostle paul was telling the believers at ephesus to do is that now your spirit man has been recreated so the salvation of your spirit the process of your spirit becoming a new creature is already complete is instantaneous but for your soul you need to renew your mind now when it comes to your body you need to put up the conduct of the old man and put on the conduct of the new man. That's what he was talking about when he says put on the new man. Now how are you going to put on the new man? Let's look at verse 25. Let's read it together. He says, therefore put in a way what? Lying. Let what? Each of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. So what you are going to do to put off the conduct of the old man is that you have to stop the activ activities, attitude, or conduct of the old man and you will begin a new conduct. So if you used to tell lies, the fact that you are born again doesn't mean lies will just pick wings and fly off. No. You have to renew your mind to identify the reality that telling lies is not right do you know that there are individuals who see telling lies as being smart how many of you have told lies this week they are, they are, they are born again believers have, how many of you have never lied since you became born again You've told lies, but you don't know. You've not told lies. You're, in the, you're on, the, on the fence. <laughs> Praise God. Now, he says, put away lying. Becoming a new creature is progressive. You have to put away lying. And when you put away lying, what will replace it? The truth. Now, you know, some of us will think that, well, once you are born again, you are born in one save is forever saved. Why did Ananias and Sapphira die? 
Eh? Not only did they keep back part of the money, the Bible says everyone sold their lands and houses and brought the money. And every man's need was met. But for them, they kept back part. The reason why they died not, was not just because they kept back part, was because they told the lie. He said, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? So his heart was not renewed. Well, was he born again? Was Safira born again? But their mind was not renewed. And they didn't put away lying. So Peter said, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? And the Bible says, upon hearing that, he fell down and what? And died. Now, do you want to tell me he went to heaven? You know, some of us just think, well, you can keep living your life once you are born again. No problem. As we fellowship, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. No. He says, if we are in the light as he is in the light. And light makes manifest. So when we come into that light, whatever is not right in our life will be what revealed. You remember when God showed up in the garden? Adam did what? He did himself. He couldn't come into the light. Why did he hide? Because his life was not right. He has disobeyed God. So if he is in the light, as if, if we are in the light, as he is the light, when we come to fellowship with him, God will begin to put his fingers on things in our lives that are not right. And as we let it go and repent, the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from every sin. I can't explain the rest, but let's run to verse 32. Next verse. Be angry and do not what? Sin. Do not let the sun go down on your rod. Can you see that? What ended the ministry of Barnabas? You remember Barnabas and Saul? When they got into an heated argument. On account of John Mark. And Barnabas felt he must go with them. And Paul said, no, he ran away from the walk. He cannot go with us. The Bible says the contention became so sharp that they were parted from one another. It was anger. The individuals that the Holy Spirit brought together got separated on the basis of anger. And Barnabas took John Mark and left. You know, history has it that he didn't leave very long. That's why later on, Paul said to Timothy, he said, bring John Mark. He is profitable now for ministry. He has land. Let him come. Anger. He says, be angry and do not what? Sin. Since you can't guide your emotion, go ahead, be angry, but if you are angry, don't sin. And if you can't Coordinate yourself so that you don't sin when you are angry. Then when you get angry, just deal with the anger. And choose not to vent it. Exactly. Because you would always get offended. But it's possible for you to refuse to be offended. Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh. So somebody can make you angry, but you can choose not to be angry. The reason why you choose not to be hungry is because you don't want to sin. So when you, you are annoyed, you just walk away. Focus on, on some other things. Praise God. He says, and do not let the sun go down on your rod. So if you leave that anger, it will become what? Rot. I need to stop now so that we can pray. Next verse. It says, No, give place to the devil. When the hunger becomes rot, it will give place to Satan. Somebody was angry with a young man for washing 
his car in front of a house and they have had some quarrels before so on this particular day a believer she got angry and came and slapped the young man and the young man gave her a return slap you know like a return match so she got so angry ran into her kitchen looked around and picked a knife and she came and stabbed him on the chest the moment she stabbed him she realized what she had done they rushed the young man to the hospital but he died on the way it's a true life story the anger turned into rot and gave place to who to the devil you remember Cain when he was angry what did he do he killed Abel so if you can't be hungry and not sin then don't be hungry don't be offended you may be offended by individuals but don't take offense walk away next verse let him who stole steal no longer i like the bible it doesn't just tell you what you shouldn't do it tells you what you should what do it says but rather let him what labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give to him who has need so the thief should not become hospitable should engage in the ministry of hospitality and which goods will he be distributing the ones that he had labored for let him walk with his hand that which is what good you remember Zacchaeus huh? when he surrendered his life to Jesus he said that which I have stolen I restore fourfold and then if I've oppressed any man you know I want to minister back to them he came voluntarily praise God next verse let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers you know this is what it means to be a new creature it's not to just sing i'm a new creation a brand new man oh things are passed away. it's not a song it's a reality so if you used to know how to cast stones with your tongue in people's eyes when you throw three four words they start weeping do you understand your, your mouth is a sword in fact it's a spear you are throwing doubts arrows in fact when you release two words you can move the hands of your spouse you don't have strength but your mouth is is mighty and i think sisters are very good at that how do you become a new creature every corrupt word must be sacked not that they go on vacation they'll be sacked out of your mouth he says but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers praise god so what you say is impacting something and you can impact death or you can also impact what grace so grace for favor grace for wisdom grace for encouragement grace for joy can be transmitted through your tongue praise god you are a transmitter of grace or death but what god wants you to transmit is grace encouragement joy 
not words that are insolent, not words that defy. Praise God. That's what it means to be a new man. It's not just to be born of a new spirit. It's not just to be regenerated within your spirit. Your mind must be renewed. And then also, your body ultimately will be saved. I'll continue from here next week. Praise God. So that we can clearly see the old things that have passed away and the things that have become new. But we've already seen some of it. Praise God. Close your eyes. Let us pray. Those are specific instructions written to believers. The first thing that must go is lying. What's mo what must go first? Lying. I want you to close your eyes and pray. That God will deliver you from the things that don't glorify God. The things that don't glorify God. 